ultimate update this is the update on what happened to my absolute favorite fish flower um so flower i had flower for about six months i think uh i had i put flowers first little video up on youtube and flower was the fish that i taught all those tricks to um the first fish i ever taught tricks to really except for baala but that's neither here nor there if you guys can look at nova while i tell the story um so i bought flower uh from a pet smart in williamsburg no in newport news um and she was purchased for seven bucks i think and she was in there with a, one other flower horn she was the bigger of the two so i bought her and i was hoping you know maybe she'd be a male but i was pretty sure she'd be a female it didn't matter um she's kind of a birthday gift for a friend that i was going to take care of um we we're going to co-own the fish i guess and the friend wanted a male because of the gigantic nuchal humps that they get. Um, but again, that's neither here nor there. Flower ended up being a female. I loved, I loved the crap out of Flower, man. Flower was amazing. Um, she was probably my very first like larger pet fish. Uh, I've had Beta in the past, like Baala was a pet fish, and um, I don't know if I ever, I never told you guys about uh, Rose or Rosemary, but she was also a pet fish, a pet Beta. Had a couple of pet betas in the past, but this was my first pet cichlid um, flower. And she grew up really fast in a 10 gallon tank and I looked forward to eventually putting her in that 29 gallon um, and then upgrading her to probably the 75, maybe even the 120 if I get that. But again, getting off track. So flower, I brought her home um, when I came home from college because William Mary kicks you off campus for two weeks between the end of the spring semester and the beginning of the summer semester. Um, so I'm off campus, she's at home, and I put her in that tank right there, had it, sp no, she had the entire tank, and Nova was in here, and they were the only two fish that I had, and I was like, you know what, I want to breed flower, um, and I want to do it this summer, I want to do it before I go back to campus so that I can only have fry to deal with on campus and not have to keep an empty tank just in case, you know, flower and Charlie don't get along or the new flower horn don't get along. So I bit the bullet, I bought a new flower horn, I'll probably show you guys him now. I keep him in here and I'll explain why in a second. So there he goes. He's very uh, inquisitive now. He has an appetite, a hearty appetite. Um, only reason he might not is because he's still recovering from the gold dust disease. I think he's completely over it from also known as velvet. Um, so when I first bought him, he had a couple of specs. He didn't have a couple of specs when I bought him. When I bought him, I thought he was completely healthy. Put him in a tank by himself. Um, just typical quarantine practices, but I felt really bad because I moved flower from there to there because um, this was a slightly larger fish. Well, I treated him like a slightly larger fish. He was $90, so uh, I definitely treated him a little bit better than flower. But flower, I, I just kept for so long. I wanted to give her a larger space as soon as possible. So I moved flower into half of this tank, and then I gave Charlie the other half. His name's Charlie, by the way. Um, absolutely gorgeous male flower horn. I just put the tank down the middle. Um, and then I let them interact for a little bit, and then I split it back up. Um, I wanted to see how they interact, if they, you know, hit it off and breed. They didn't at first, and I'll probably post a couple of clips of them interacting. Um, but yeah. So then uh, Charlie started developing uh, spots. I thought it was Ick, and Star had Ick when I first got him, uh, her, whichever. And Star recovered perfectly fine. Star never lost her appetite. Star. Um, after like a couple of water changes, you know, every day I did the uh, large water change, like 50% to 70% water change, and Star recovered fine. Star was perfectly healthy, perfectly happy. So I thought it would be the same thing with this, with Flower. Um, Flower had never been sick, and, you know, I treated it kind of like human immune systems in that it'd be better for her to get um, introduced to this disease sooner and uh, recover from it, have antibodies against it, whatever. Um, and it'd be better for them as a pair to kind of have that interaction time as opposed to spitting them off. Uh, and this was after I added her. I didn't know that he was sick when I added her, which is the point of quarantine. Again, always quarantine your fish, guys. Um, I don't want to make this video too long, but long story short, let's see if he'll bite me. He's really, oh God, he's gonna bite me. Um, so yeah, added Flower uh, and Charlie and Flower were together for a little bit. Charlie's an absolutely gorgeous fish, by the way. I might, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys. Oh, yeah, he's gonna bite me though. I really, it's hard to hate this fish. I hated this fish at first, because he killed my favorite fish, you know? But this is a gorgeous fish. 
He's so much more beautiful when you put him in a fish tank um, and have him with the great light. But Flower caught velvet. Charlie had velvet. I thought they had ick at first. Turned out they had velvet. So then I looked up velvet. Never had a fish have velvet before. Um, so I started treating them with uh, copper safe, which was like seven years old probably. By then it was too late for flower. Um, I covered the tank, but again, like flower, lost her appetite, um, clamp fins. Really took it a lot harder than Charlie, who's only staying in this, you know, clay pot. Um, and flower, I covered the tank because I read that you're, that's what you're supposed to do because velvet has chloroplasts. Um, so they photosynthesize, they use light to create energy. Taking away their light, you know, weakens the parasite. Cover the tank with towels. The next day, uh, I don't take the towels off in the morning. I don't feed them. Um, come back home after work. Take off the towels. Flower's dead. Like, okay. Tank smells. Like, okay. This, this really sucks. I'm really pissed off at this fish. Should have been pissed off at myself um, for not quarantining him properly, for being so impatient. But, again, you know, it is what it is, unfortunately. So I added him to this tub. I'm like, okay, I lost one fish. And part of me wanted to take him back to the pet store, get my money back. Couldn't do that. Part of me wanted to start over completely. Like, I was going to um, start the hobby over. That same day, before I came home and realized that Flower died, I bought this little Flower Horn just because I looked at him. I like, I really like this little guy. Um, and I wanted to go back through the motions of raising a Flower Horn again and have an option besides uh, Chuck over here. Um, because Chuck's never probably going to breed with this fish if it ends up being a a female just because he's so big and she's so small but uh, I was gonna hope that he was gonna outgrow either one of them and give me some options as far as uh, breeding flower horns go but again off topic um, flowers dead so now I moved Charlie into this tub so that he can have as dark an environment as possible I have him on a sponge filter and a heater the water temperature is at like 80 is it gonna focus I'll just read it it's like 84 it's at 84 it's been around between like 84 and 86 for the past couple of days um, I've done one teaspoon per gallon of salt uh, I started that a few days ago and it's just been set there I did a 100% water change today um, and kept the same level of salinity because he looks like he's fine um, he looks like he's completely cured of velvet. I'm going to leave him in here for a couple of more days. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add Nova to the tank with Lola because Lola, Lola's mouth is so messed up, man. Parrot cichlids, that's going to be a whole other video on parrot cichlids and hybrid fish in general. All th four of these guys are hybrids and so is Flower. Long story short, she can't hurt Nova. So I think I'm going to add Nova in with uh, Lola and keep Charlie by himself. Definitely learned my lesson on quarantining. Um, Charlie's gonna go by himself for a while uh, and I'm thinking about renaming him or giving him a nickname Ragnarok just because of how horribly he destroyed my favorite fish it wasn't his fault but I still think the name would be fitting also because it's such a gorgeous fish I think the red on his you know flanks really is reflective of the death and the destruction that is Ragnarok, you know, the Norse legend of the end of Asgard. But I'm letting my nerd side show out a little bit too much right now. That being said, I'm making a fish video, so what can you really, you know, say to redeem yourself from that? But that's the story of what happened to Flower. Um, hopefully the next few stories and the rest of my hobby will be nothing but happy stories, but of course that's not the case. So I told you guys what happened. Um, have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Um, and if you want to hear any other stories about any other fish, you know, let me know. Hear the story about Star, which is really a much shorter story, probably like 30 seconds. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on. Um, oh, in case you haven't seen it, the cribs bread. Oh, that's a whole other story. And I stole three of their fry, and one of them made it in the eight gallon cube, and now he's in the seven gallon cube. Or no, the eight inch cube. Now he's in the seven gallon cube. And he's going to grow up. Yeah, that's what's going on, guys. Thanks for watching. And you'll be seeing a lot more of him, hopefully. And a lot more of all of these fish. Because, you know, I didn't stop fish keeping when Flower died. I just kind of kept getting more fish and more tanks. And 